Okay, hello everyone. Let's get started. So, in previous video, we have uh, set up our Android Studio. Uh, we created our first project and using AVD Manager created uh, Android virtual device and uh, tried to launch newly created application on it. Yeah, by, uh, so, confirming that everything works fine. So, if you have missed a uh, previous video, I would strongly suggest to watch it. So, the link should appear on the top right corner, right? And today, we'll discuss Android Studio project structure. Yeah? So, what folders we have, what are the purpose of the files stored in them, and so on. Uh, so, the, by the way, the uh, same material is also available as a blog post. Uh, on my website, the mobile.dev. So the link uh, will be in description. So if you prefer reading instead of watching, so you are welcome. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at the structure. Yeah? So the uh, file tree is available on the left side of the screen. Uh, so you can see the project. So if you need more space to work on the file to see the code, you can uh, hide this tree by pressing this uh, project tab and you can see everything, all the screen is now dedicated to the code, right? So if you need it back, just press uh, project tab once again, okay? And let's have a look at the views of the uh, file tree. Yeah, so they are multiple uh, views available and by default when the project is generated we use this android view uh, if you click on drop down you can see multiple views so android view is the default one and what the view uh, so this android view combines files by its purpose uh, so we have manifest files code uh, files under java resources and gradle scripts right so it's it might be convenient but what you should keep in mind that the folder and file structure on your hard disk is completely different yeah so the underlying structure on the file system is completely different so what i would suggest to you is to switch from android view to project view at least for now yeah because this uh, project view it shows how the files are actually stored on your uh, file system uh, so that's the exact structure so once you get used to it which file is stored there you can switch to any view you prefer right so let's have a quick overview what files we have so the first is this dot uh, gradle folder so actually it contains some uh, temporary or intermediate files uh, generated by uh, by Gradle. So these uh, files are uh, generated uh, while Gradle while Gradle is uh, syncing, yeah, or uh, building. So you don't need to take care about them. And uh, for example, if you would like to transfer your project to a different device and you would like to archive it, you can skip uh, .gradle folder. It's not needed. Yeah? So basically, the same applies to .idea. So here, uh, some system uh, information is stored by uh, Android Studio itself. Yeah? So also, you don't need to think about that. Uh, the most important folder for us is app folder. So that's the folder of the module. Yeah? So by default, when we create an application, it contains only one module, .app, but in general, it contains uh, multiple and each module will have its own folder yeah so let's uh, look in more details what we have under this folder so the first one is build so the folder created and generated by gradle when we do a build for our application so all for all folders are all files are generated automatically and in particular why we are interested in outputs folder and under apk we have a file 
dot apk which actually contains our application so if you would like to share your application with someone or you want to install your application on some devices to test it yeah you should take this file and copy it to a particular device then you install it and use your application like right okay so that the build folder once again if you copy your project you don't need to take this build folder lips folder it contains some libraries which cannot be automatically fetched by Gradle. So for some reasons, either these um, libraries are very old or they are unpopular, so you uh, cannot find a Gradle dependency. Or, for example, and that's the case uh, quite often, uh, these are C++ libraries. Uh, so then, if you need such library, you should move it to a lips folder, right? SRC folder. It contains a source code or any code related to our application. So we have two uh, test folders which uh, contain file, files for automated tests. We'll talk in more details about them. Just now, for now, keep in mind. We have uh, okay, and the main folder. So here we have a source code of our application under Java folder. Yeah. So here is a package name, dev.themobile. So as we previously discussed, package name uniquely identifies our application on Google Play Store. Yeah, because there could be uh, multiple applications with the same name on Play Store, but there couldn't be two or more applications with the same package name. Yeah, so package name is a unique ID for our application. Yeah, so when you upload your application to Google Play Store, Google also checks that the uh, application with the same package name uh, doesn't exist. If it exists, you will be asked to change your package name, right? And under the package, we have a source code. So for now, we have only one file which has been automatically generated, uh, main activity. And this activity file actually describes the business logics of our application or of our activity yeah so um, simply speaking activity that the uh, screen what we see on our device yeah so for example if you have free screens most probably we have free activities yeah and for each activity we have a separate uh, java file right um, as we have only one activity this file will be launched automatically once we launch our application Right, uh, resource folder, very important folder which contains all resources used in our application, uh, like icons, pictures, uh, music, video, and so on. Yeah. So for uh, pictures and icons, we have two type of folders: drawable and mipmap. What's the difference? We'll talk uh, later. But they both store or can store icons and uh, pictures. Yeah. And as you can see, for MIPMAP, for example, we have MIPMAP-HDPI. So HDPI, that's the resolution of the screen. Yeah. So when your application is launched, Android will automatically find resource which is most suitable for your uh, screen resolution. So if it doesn't find, or for example, uh, the resolution is HDPI, but this map is empty, it will take it uh, from the MIPMAP any DPI, right? Okay, uh, values folder. Uh, so here we have some uh, constants defined. So for example, if we use uh, some colors across our application, here we have uh, here we define a constant, so we can use it in our application. Not hard code, but constant. And the same applies for string resources. And by default, we have uh, one constant defined, app underscore name, and here we have our application name right and android manifest xml so the most important file system file which defines some basic info about our application the name which uh, icon to use what are the activities which activity should be launched by default and so on yeah, so we'll talk uh, about manifest file in the next video because it's very important for us Okay, so that's app folder. Um, here we have a build.gradle. Yeah, we have actually two such scripts. So 
as you can see resolution.gradle so that's a gradle script and here on the app level uh, build Gradle script, it contains some info about our application. So for uh, which Android version it's meant for. Uh, so you can see compile SDK 30. Uh, so that's the target. Uh, mean SDK 26. So meaning that on Android API level less than 26, we will not be able to launch our application at all. Uh, so we talked about that in the previous video. Uh, version code so what the sequence number of our code so that's would be that would be important for google play store and version name yeah so both these parameters are, are needed for uh, google play store so here we have a description of how we compile our application and dependency section very important section uh, here we describe which external libraries uh, should be uh, fetched by Gradle and uh, we use in our project. Yeah, so we will work with this section quite frequently. So implementation, meaning this library is used uh, in our application code as such and uh, test implementation, Android test implementation, meaning that these libraries are used in automated tests I showed you. Yeah, test or Android test uh, folders, right? Uh, Gradle folder uh, contains some uh, Gradle related files. We don't need to talk about them for now. Also, we have a build Gradle uh, file on the project level. Yeah. It contains some uh, info, for example, from which repositories we should uh, take our dependencies or Gradle should take them. We'll talk about that. Uh, Gradle properties also uh, the file project wide gradle settings as you can see uh, on the first line um, so uh, project wide gradle settings so we'll uh, also work with this file not very frequently but will and uh, local properties yeah so basically here we have this sdk.dir uh, defining where we have this uh, sdk available yeah and what I would like to say about that, so if you copy your project uh, to some uh, different device and would like to launch it there and do some coding, so if you also take this local properties file and will try to uh, open the project on a different device, most probably you will get an error because on a different device this SDK dir will be in a different location. Yeah, so what you will need to do just to change the value of this uh, of this um, of this variable to a new one which actually contains your SDK yeah okay and basically settings gradle some settings uh, which we will talk about later yeah so that's a short overview yeah thanks to all for watching still if you have some questions some doubts comments please place them under the video, right? If you have not subscribed yet, that's the right time to do, yeah, so you don't miss any videos. Once again, uh, this info is also available as a post on my website, themobile.dev. Have a look. That's all for today. Thanks to all for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.